Well, I was trying to set the tempo, really. I, I wasn't. My voice carries, uh, and sometimes it seems like I'm real frustrated. It gets louder and louder. I think what I was trying to do is make a point of, you're right, let's run on and off the field. Um, I didn't ever use the word hustle. I, I don't think I use it. If I did, that's a mistake for me. But the volume, and like I told the coaches and, and the players, when I start raising my volume, my voice, uh, hear the message. You know, eliminate the noise, just hear the message. But I was a little perturbed. Yeah, that you. Right, we got to do it not, not later. It's got to be tomorrow. It's got to be today, not later. You know, the longer we wait, the worse it gets. So you recognize that, and you're right. I did get on them a little bit. Coach, in terms of the leaders, Kyle Soley has kind of been dubbed by his teammates as the leader of the defense. The captain. Team. Captain. Captain. Let's tell it like it is. Captain. Is there anybody else that's kind of standing out? Oh, sure. We, he's not the only one now. I think what the kids see is, you know, he's been here so long. He's a middle linebacker. You know, they usually establish the tempo most of the time. Uh, we got a whole lot of other leaders, though. I mean, that we actually we, we got a leadership group of about, I would say, eight to ten players on both sides, and uh, they come together and they they run the team basically. But uh, they they labeled him captain. What kind of role do you see Nesta playing this year for this defense? Well, first thing is he got to get healthy, and that you know this. When you look at Nessa, the, the snaps he's had in this camp is the first snaps he had since he's been here. I, I would like to see what, what you saw when he, when he was in the portal. You know, quickness, uh, understanding of football, IQ is good, finishing on the quarterback, um, great athletic ability uh, to play that position. That, and it shows up. It showed up today. Last question for me. For what role do you see Will Schaefer kind of playing this year? Well, he's got to get, you know, it's like anything else. You're one snap away from playing. So you got to make sure that you're on top of your game as far as understanding the defense, knowing where you're supposed to line up at, making sure you get the calls, closing the front, making sure everybody can get lined up. So he one snap away. Like everybody else when it's all said that. You're playing football, you're one snap away if you're, if you're behind somebody. Come on, I know you got something. <laughs> I came in late, so I don't want to ask you questions that you've already been asked. Well, we, we've only had 20. All right. So uh, we were able to talk to Elijah. Um, just an awesome moment for him to get on scholarship. You've worked with him last year. That's just, right. What is it, you know, about him that you thought that, you know, he deserved it to be on scholarship? You know, he's been here five years. He's done everything he's supposed to do. He's, he's good in the classroom. He's good on the football field. And we have established in the program guys like that deserve to get a, a scholarship. You don't get it just because you're, you're here. You, you, know, you do all the right things, which he has done since he's been here. And that's what, he, that's what he, he's got it because, or he deserves it because of that. OK, I'll go now. <laughs> uh, obviously, guys like Omar, Omar, Omar and BJ Green are going to be asked to be more pivotal players than they were last year. Can you talk about how they've improved since last year in their roles? Well, I tell you what happens is, when you're a backup player the year before, you don't get all of the, the opportunities to participate. And all of a sudden, you're in that row, and uh, you're the guy now. And those two guys have established themselves with the reps they had last year, playing you know, minimum snaps. And now they're in that position where they're starters and competing. Um, you just look forward to those guys keep progressing to the point where you know you can. Right now, I can depend on them. We haven't played a game. You know, they work hard in practice. They do everything you ask them to do. You, know, you, you got to be excited about that, and I am. I think I saw somebody tweeting out the other day that Omar was like in, he was here like at 6.30 really early before oh, yeah. like most people got here. Oh, yeah. Right. You know, I'm here most of the time. I'm Saturday and Sundays, I'm still here working on stuff with just getting out the house, so to speak. But um, they were here 6, 7 o'clock in the morning. And, and it's amazing. They're out there working on the sleds. And those are good signs because, you know, you don't – sometimes you expect them to do it, but you don't expect them to do it. You know, you, you sit there and say, yeah, I wish they would do it, but eh, they ain't going to do it. But those type of kids that that's, the lights come on, so to speak, I'm proud. I'm, I'm excited and proud of them to, to, to be a backup and now all of a sudden be in that starting position and try to continue 
improving your skills, which is which is great. I tell y'all, you're not gonna get me to, to, today. I'm not saying a word. <laughs> yeah. But you spoiled us. You're so yeah. yeah, you boy, you, you, you guys got me in trouble. <laughs> I saw that thing out there on Twitter. I was like, oh man. So you ain't. <laughs> I promise you, I'm. Jesus. No, I'm good. I'm good. Coach, I've, I've noticed a lot of uh, how vocal Coach Rodriguez is with his defensive line and um, I guess the energy and communication that they have in their drills specifically before you get out on the 11 on 11s. Uh, what have you made from that group specifically and what are your expectations for them this year? Well, I don't know if you've been around a lot of D-line coaches, but they're all about the same. You know, they, they got that language sometimes that I have to let them know, you know, watch the language. They got ladies out here. But in terms of uh, developing uh, skill and technique, he, he's pretty good at it. The kids, you know, as a coach, you always want to hope that your kids or your young men would listen to you and, de and develop the things you're trying to improve with them. And he does a very good job at making sure that he, he slows it down and he communicates very well. He's a very great communicator, no doubt about that. And, I, and when you do that and the kids respect you, and they and they, I make moves. That. And they see themselves improving because of the things they're learning. That's really good. So the one thing I do know that they respect him. Johnny, you're gonna have two um, linebackers started this year. Who's that? Well, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. I'm. I'm <laughs> Yeah, he, he's another one. You know, if you look at our team, we got a lot of guys that's been here over the years. And just like you were asking me about, when you get the opportunity to step up, you got to step up. Now, you're talking about a kid that started out as a defensive back, then we moved him at linebacker, and he's been at linebacker. He was learning how to play linebacker, and he's starting to still understand the linebacker's techniques. He's only going to get better. He can run, he's physical, and he's smart. What else you need? Just learn techniques and run. Go play football. Is there anybody else? Is there anybody on the, maybe on the back end that you feel like has helped themselves uh, to get into a better position? To well, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to create that problem right now. Um, seriously, uh, and I don't mean it's a problem. You got to be careful sometimes as with the depth chart. You know, kids only own the kids only realize one thing: how many reps am I getting? So what I try to talk about is don't worry about the reps. It's when, when you have a rep, that's what's important. Make sure you, you're doing the best that you can with your reps. So we got a lot of guys that's fighting for positions now. The competition is really good. You know, with the safeties and the corners that we brought in and the guys that's been here, uh, we're moving a few guys around. You know, you got, you'll see guys playing ones with this guy, and the next thing you know, he's playing cover one. I'll say, give me the ones, and you got different ones in there. So we're trying to make sure that we get – I look at a bunch of combinations, if that makes sense. You already had some guys with your size at corner, like Keon, who's a pretty good sized guy, but then you had Luckett and Torrance. And yeah. Just like, yeah. You know, I mean, they're like bigger than well, I, NFL, you, you know how this game is. You know, it's a big man's game. Yeah. You, know, I, it, it, you know, the bigger you are, the longer you are, the faster you are, you, you, people got to go around you. They can't go straight ahead. Come on now. See, I'm not, I, I ain't even trying that one. Yeah, that's a good one. You almost tried to get me again. We can play football now. I know, I know. No, I'll tell you what it is, though. It does, it does give you an opportunity to uh, make, make some calls, and, you know, play bigger, better defense. Yeah. You almost got me. I told you, you ain't going to get me today. Yeah, not today. Physical, fast, downhill. Just got to learn what to do. You know, we, we saw some things today that you say, ooh, <laughs> ooh. That's it. I'm not saying no more on it. You guys, I tell you, you can get me no more. <laughs> Go ahead. So you don't see a lot of safeties that come down to play nickel. Right. It helps us out. Now you got Jordan that can play safety, who's been playing corner and nickel. The versatility of it is what you want. And, and that's what we talk about. If we can get more guys that are versatile, that playing two positions, not three. Now, three's hard. 
we got some guys that are trying to play three, and I have to tell them slow down a little bit, learn two, and now interchangeable when that ball is snapped. You know, when a safety can come down, you don't have to take him out, and they got three wide receivers, and he can come down and play the third wide receiver. Heck, you can do pretty much anything you want when you don't have to be worried about bringing another guy in because they substitute. If, he's learning how to do it. I, I was when, when we put him there in the spring, I was like, why is he in there? And then I was told he just jumped in. There. I was like, ooh, he sees, he sees one thing. He can go inside, and he's trying to learn both positions, which is fine with me now. That's what you want. You want versatility, you know, when you don't have to worry. Let's say you got six guys. You know, when, when I was in the NFL as a defensive back coach, I was used to having maybe seven to eight guys. So with that saying, you got to have guys that are interchangeable. You know, one guy's playing nickel. Hell, he might have to go play corner. Um, safety's playing safety. Then he got to go play dime. So, you know, we, we're trying to tailor it to how many players can you use at a certain time. I would like to get to the point where not only you're too deep, maybe you, you, you got 12. You know, and, and with that being said, you, give, you got 12 and you're giving guys a chance and a role, and everybody wants to play. Once, they, once you establish a role for a guy, they usually, they usually take off. That's, that's okay. I'm injured on game two. I'm, I'm injured right now. I'm good. Hey, I, I, I ain't messing with that.